Hi, this is to, uh, Vinny from Tokenui uh, in Malaysia. I'm just welcoming in, welcoming in Gordon uh, to iMoot. Uh, vanilla is not the only flavour. Um, I hope you enjoy Gordon's presentation. And, uh, and, and Gordon, it's great to have you here. Thank you very much for presenting. Uh, it's, it's an awful lot of work that it takes to prepare something for, for, for a webinar. Um, so uh, yeah, whenever you, you're ready, um, take it away. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vinny. And good morning, everyone. Uh, well, it's good morning for me. I guess for some of you, you're going to be uh, good afternoon, good evening, possibly even good night for those of you who are extremely dedicated. So thank you for coming along to this session. I've recently taken up a new post. so. I'm going to talk mainly about my experiences as a, a Moodle and Mahara site administrator and learning technologist in my previous role, which was with the Royal Conservatoire of Scotland. I'll start with a quick overview of designing learning services, then move on to showcase some themes work before looking at some minor code hacks to change the default values to suit your own institution. Time permitting, and I think we will have the time, uh, I'll finish with a walkthrough of changing the URL link so that users, if you've got Moodle and Mahara set up in tandem, can click on a link in Moodle and go to a specific page in Mahara and still remain signed in. I'd like to say a quick thanks to my wife for providing this image that captures the theme of my talk. I design learning services and she designs cakes. Uh, no guesses which one's more popular. Out of the box, or vanilla version of Moodle doesn't suit the needs of every institution across the world. In keeping with the theme of the conference, this session is really about being open to changing how Moodle works to suit the needs of your own institution and users. Thank you, Christina. I've just seen the, the note in the comments box. Uh, they were quite yummy, I have to say, those cakes. Okay. When you're designing the services for learning technologies, I tend to look at four specific areas. I ask users what they want. Sometimes really simple things upset users and put them off, but whether that's due to a lack of awareness or because the software can't or hasn't been configured to do something, you don't know until you speak to people. Sometimes they're put off simply because it looks ugly or the course structure has grown organically and users can't find the resources that they need. I also make a point of asking managers what they need. Usually this is about effective reporting and simplified administration. But if senior management or administrative decision makers don't use Moodle, they often have no idea that it can do things like control messaging to student groups and automate elements of testing, marking and assessment processing, including timestamp uh, for submissions and student feedback. An obvious area that I feel is obvious, at least in this area I feel is obvious, is involve the users in the design. Let people play and dream. Uh, in an ideal world, what do they think Moodle should do? I think people ask for functionality that isn't part of the core. So I've gone away and looked at others, how others have tackled the same issue and come back with some solutions for that. They don't always work quite the way the users want it first time, but if they see that you're actually trying, uh, most people are very interested and get more engaged in making sure that things work properly in the future. One thing I would really, really want to emphasise is don't be afraid to submit bug reports and feature reports and vote if an issue affects you. Share what you're developing and let other people remix that and release it back to the community. I've contributed some themes as, as middle plugins, uh, and I've also done so, a lot of feedback to the, the folks in Mahara, and they've been incredibly responsive, uh, taking people's ideas and actually making sure that they transform how Mahara works to make it much more usable. I'd never have known where to start with my themes if someone else hadn't released one and said, make this available for anyone to copy and play about with. Uh, that gave me a structure to build from. You also need to think about the processes involved in using Moodle. 
In my previous role, our tutors didn't want to be emailed every time a user submitted an assignment. They had to leave feedback when they were marking, and the, the submissions had to be anonymous. All of these functionalities have the opposite default setting in the middle, and there isn't an administrative option to specify an alternative. So either you put up with every tutor having to change multiple default settings, or you modify them at code level to reduce the number of options that the users have to deal with. Now, some administrators will be very wary of doing this, and for good reason. Changing the core code yourself can make the software unstable and it may present problems when it comes to upgrading later. Standard disclaimer for that is, any changes you make are at your own risk. Personally, I think calculated risk is required for innovation and enhancement. Tweaks that I'm going to show are very minor, and I've never had any issues when using them. But I would say that life was easier for the users after the changes were made. When I first arrived at RSAMD, as the conservatoire was known at the time, Middle looked pretty much as you see it on the screen, though without any pictures. For a number of reasons, people hadn't engaged with it. That was a major factor in why I was brought in. It wasn't hated, it just wasn't used very much. People said it was clunky, confusing and boring. It failed to capture the spirit of a performing arts institution and didn't do what they thought it should. I ran a series of focus, focus groups when I arrived. Uh, that was very much the first thing that I wanted to do, was find out what users thought. I wanted to identify what they wanted Middle to do and how they thought it should look. And I got back some interesting ideas, such as this one. This is a, a mock-up of some of the feedback that I got from the users. So after we'd covered Middle with Lego and what do you want Middle to do, I then showed people how other institutions presented Middle and we talked about, what do you want middle to look like? The standard answer was not middle, although some of the visuals that came back initially were quite traditional. I'll just click through a small selection of mock-ups that arose from the paper and pen sessions, when people got to express themselves creatively in designing what they wanted middle to do and how it should look. Straight away, we see that people wanted a lot of imagery. They want, wanted it to be quite visual. They wanted how things were presented to be quite clean and clear. And we had a look at how, for example, a specific course might look. Uh, there was quite a lot of demand at that point for multiple columns. I have to say that changed over the course of time. Uh, but the idea of having your module resources in two columns was quite a popular one. This one was, was much closer to what we finally ended up with. Uh, again, a lot more visually driven. The idea was that each of those icons within the film strip would lead you to a specific area of middle, uh, which helped people categorise and find the relevant content. So after talking to people and letting them play with colouring pens, post-it notes, scissors and magazines, I think that was supervised obviously, we are talking about staff here, uh, as well as the students, uh, I came up with our first regeneration of Middle and People were happy with it for a while. I'd like to say theming Moodle is easy, but that's not really true unless you've got a background in web design or PHP coding or something like that. What isn't difficult, though, is using themes that someone else has built. They're downloaded from Moodle plugins, then someone has already gone through the process of checking that they install correctly, work as expected, and meet certain minimum requirements. 
there's no real problem doing that, I would think, for most people. At the end of the day, a default theme is only an attempt to present a consistent generic look and feel that will be considered OK by most people. Many institutions will be constrained by branding and have to use certain colour schemes. At RSAMD, uh, I happen to be lucky that we had quite a wide palette of colours. So the initial themes that I developed, uh, you can see a number of them on the screen. These all corresponded to themes that our uh, colour schemes that our marketing department had approved. After this set of branded themes was released, though. I was then able to focus on developing a range of accessible themes. If you've got le learners who are disadvantaged by your colour scheme and layout, however pretty, then you have a problem. Likewise, if you have learners or staff who don't use Moodle because it's poorly laid out or just doesn't look nice to them, then you have a problem. And if you're constrained by having one single theme that doesn't suit all, then you have a really big problem. I'm now going to jump ahead to Moodle 2.4. Uh, this is about 18 months to two years after the uh, earlier schemes that you saw there. With an institutional name change uh, to the Royal Conservatoire, and take a look at a couple of the features that I added to that theme. Giving users some choice can make all the difference. I don't think that I need to explain the importance of personalization to anyone attending this conference. I'd rather show you a few examples of how I took a base colour scheme and created a series of very different looking themes that all work exactly the same, but which address some accessibility issues or give the users the opportunity to have fun with how Moodle looks. So over the months after moving to 2.4, I rolled out a series of planet themes following the same basic structure as the institutional royal theme. I even added a fun Christmas theme, which you can see in the bottom right of the screen, um, for those who wanted to feel particularly festive in December. All the themes that I'm going to show now are available from, uh, or I should say, they were available from the middle drop down menu, um, which, as well as giving the users one click access to the themes, also helped to structure courses in a more intuitively navigable way. One of the things that I don't like about how Moodle handled changing the themes is that you have to drill into the user, look at some of the settings. It can be quite off-putting. So that is why I brought them onto the, the main screen and made them part of the drop-down menu. The planet series of themes that I'm about to show are all available from GitHub or downloadable as plugins from Moodle, which you can access from the URL on the top right of the screen there. I will be putting all the links uh, onto the, the course at the end of the presentation. Uh, and obviously, this uh, presentation itself will be made available afterwards. So don't need to worry about scribbling down any links if you find something particularly useful. Uh, you will be able to get them later. Here are a few of the themes from the, the Planet series. If you're going to offer multiple themes, I recommend that they should all follow a similar structure and only vary in colour or font size or typeface. Absolutely, please avoid switching between a two and three column theme because users will get really confused and the blocks start to jump around. While most of the Planet themes are intended to offer a choice to address accessibility issues, I specifically avoided naming them disability themes. I didn't want them to be tagged in that way. Instead, I opted to have a common motif running through the entire set to make them interesting without any prejudice. I have to say that some of these themes were adopted quite readily um, by students, some of them quite surprisingly. For example, there's a, a shocking pink one that we used for Venus. That proved to be quite popular, uh, not just among some of the girls, I have to say. If I had tagged that as, this is a theme for people with a disability, nobody would have used it. 
So naming the themes in this way also sets an expectation of what they might look like. Users will be able to visualize that Mars might be a dark red color, or Luna, which is the moon, a silvery gray color. The very dark one with the yellow writing there in the middle is called Pluto. Uh, I know that's not a planet, but it fitted the, the set of the particular themes. Example on the screen now is Earth, and I'm going to take a closer look at a couple of the added features for that. These are features that are common to all of the themes in the Planet series. One of the issues on a busy course is that it quickly becomes cluttered and confusing. There were a few discussions on middle blogs, I think it was about a year ago, that led me to the solution I adopted for these themes, which is auto-hide. Essentially, when editing is on, editing buttons are all hidden until the teacher points the mouse at the activity they want to edit. At that point, the editing buttons appear, but only for that single activity. And of course, with dozens of activities and resources, this can help prevent the user from being swamped by the sheer number of icons on screen. I'm sure most of you will have seen long, complicated uh, courses where there are hundreds of resources, and the number of icons on the screen is simply bewildering, especially to a teacher who's new to middle. At the bottom of this screen here, and it's also at the bottom of all of the planet themes, uh, I've added a Moodle bar. Now, this was originally developed by Lewis Carr, and it contains shortcuts to popular features, making it easier to get to them quickly, so you don't need to hunt through menus. Some people like menus, though. Other people like icons, but they don't have to be incompatible. Uh, I have both on my themes, so that people have a range of ways to get into particular areas that are quite important to them. In the next section, we're going to look at some code edits to change the default settings for assignments site-wide. Screenshots show some of the default settings for a Moodle 2.4 assignment, and I've highlighted a few areas where the default values weren't the ones that our teaching staff wanted to use. So, for example, notify graders is switched on by default, blind marking is switched off by default, and the grade is by default 100% scale. If you have an institutional scale that you use, you ideally want that to be the default. You don't want people to have to switch it. I also have to say that when you add your own scales, they appear above the 100% on the drop-down menu. It's not necessarily intuitive to teachers that have actually got to scroll upwards to find it. My view on getting staff to engage with Moodle has always been, don't make it harder than it needs to be. If 95% of your users need to do A, B, and C, then why wouldn't you make it easy for them to have A, B, and C as a default so they don't need to change anything? The middle interface can get very, very complicated, and if you leave people to change all the settings themselves, some of them will just get flustered and miss things that they really need. Modifying the default scale is documented on Middle, but I'm going to walk through the process here. In the settings block, go to Site Administration, Grades, Scales. You can actually change the default uh, grade scale at this point, but you need some information from here in order to do it within the code. Do so you see here that the scales? that I have created uh, for this demonstration. If your scale doesn't yet exist on Moodle, then you can create it here by clicking on the Add Scale button. 
I've set up two demo scales, rainbow and 10 point scale. You click on the edit button of the scale that you're interested in. Now, for the purposes of this demo, I clicked on the edit button of both scales as I wanted to show you the difference. In the first scale, rainbow, which is the one at the top, the URL shows and ID equals 2 at the end. In the second scale, 10 point, URL shows and ID equals 3 at the end. I need this value, in my case number 3, as it's going to be added to the line of code that we're going to change. So I'm now going to talk through the scary bit, which is actually changing things. My recommendation when modifying any code or when adding new plugins is to start with a test copy of Moodle. This should ideally be a restored backup of your live site on a testing server so that you can identify if there are any knock-on effects to existing settings and courses. Take a copy of the file that you're about to modify and I recommend that you prefix Word old to the name. It's quite a standard convention. That way it's easier to undo the change if you mess up the code because you simply delete the test file and rename the old unmodified file to put it back. Now, unless you're logged in as the root user, which isn't recommended, you'll need to switch permissions on the file to make yourself the owner so you can then edit the file. You just need to remember to switch the ownership back once you've finished to root or admin or whatever the default is for your site. After that, you just need to edit the file, save the changes, reset the file permissions and test the results on Moodle. If everything works fine, you can then follow the same process on your live site, obviously after taking a backup in case anything goes wrong. To modify the default grade scale, the file that we're after is in the middle slash course folder and it's called middleform.mod.php and we want to open this with the text editor. Search for the text that I've put at the top there, so you're looking to find set default grade you find the entire line of code reads M form set default grades comma 100. I want to change that value 100, which is setting the percentile of 100% scale, to the value of the new grade that we want to use. But I need to add a negative sign to the number. So in my example where I have the number 3, I want to make that minus 3. You then save your changes, you log into middle and add a new assignment. And when you add the new assignment, you see that the default grade is now set to your new scale, which in my case is the 10 point scale. The next thing I want to change the default settings for is notify graders. Unless you put very small class sizes or the luxury of responding to submissions as and when they appear, you probably don't want an email every time a student submits a piece of work. Details of how to amend this are on the middle forums, and again, the link is at the top of the page. But we'll do a, a walkthrough of that here. Note that when you drill into the, the folders on Moodle, you'll see two folders related to assignments. You ignore the one that is called Assignment, that's the old version that came through from Moodle 1. We are looking for the one called Assign in this case. And within there, we are looking for the uh, file modform.php. Within modform.php, find set default 
send notifications and you see that pops up in several places. We're looking for the, the entire line that reads M form set default send notifications comma one. If you replace the one with a zero, then the default net notifications are switched off. Modifying the notify grader about late submissions would be handled in exactly the same way. It's just a few lines further down this page. So personally, I think it's better to leave this enabled so that staff get an extra reminder about late work. But if you wanted to, you could switch it off in exactly the same way. Another thing that I want to change the default for is blind marking, which I was delighted to see finally arrive in 2.4. In the UK, it's a standard requirement for most institutions that marks are awarded without the examiner knowing which student submitted the work. I realise that isn't the case in institutions worldwide, but in the UK, it's been a particular issue for a long time. Details of how to amend this are on the middle forums, uh, but we'll run through the process here so that you can see that it's not a difficult thing to do. In the same mod form PHP file we've just edited, in fact it's just a few lines further down the page, you need to amend the line M form set default lined marking comma zero and replace the zero with a one and that means that line marking is then switched on by default. You save the settings and go to middle to add a new assignment and then you can see that the two things that we've just edited on that file, the notify graders is now set to no and blind marking is now set to yes. Unless you're using Git to track any local changes, you need to redo these tweaks whenever you run an upgrade. I recommend institutions managing their own middle should use Git if you're planning to make a number of changes, as this will save you time and effort in the long run. How to use Git is a bit more complicated than I'd like to get into for this session. I do recommend that uh, if you're going to use Git, make sure you, you study that carefully and become familiar with it. I just want to pause a second. Carol, are you still having problems with your sound, or is this coming through okay? We may have an issue there. Uh, Carol, if you want to pick up with one of the uh, moderators, if there is an issue there. Um, and we'll continue on. Something that I came across uh, almost by accident was that a user reported to me they couldn't look at PDF files on their iPad. And there is a problem there because the automatic setting for PDF documents is to embed them, and the embedded document can't be scrolled past the first page on a lot of tablet devices. There is a middle tracker issue on this, but it still hasn't been resolved yet. But it does provide a described fix, and the link at the top of the page there uh, is added for that. So, to fix this, we need to change the default automatic action for PDFs. Or, alternatively, you could ensure that every member of staff manually changes this to download. Uh, I know which one I think is harder to achieve. So, in mod resource locallib.php, we see on the screen there. You need to go to the line 
fine mile type, sorry, file mine type in type group. That's a very long line. Just look for the bit that says resource lib display embed. And if you delete the .pdf from that, it takes PDF out of the automatic embedding options. So PDF can then just download and open. Then you can view it on your iPad normally. Okay, we're on to the, the last part of this. Um, we do have time for this, I think. So I'm going to show you how to take a link from Moodle that will open a specific page in Mahara and leave the user signed in. One of the bugbears I had for a few years when running Moodle and Mahara together was that if I wanted to send users to a specific page on Mahara from a link in Moodle, you had to log in again to get there. I recently found out how to use the existing single sign-on link to allow the users to log in and arrive at the correct specific page. A slightly more detailed version of this is documented on Moon Mahara pages, which is the link at the top of the page. I'll briefly go over the method here. And I have to say it sounds more complicated than it actually is. First of all, you copy the network server's link. Now, depending on how your institution set this up, you might have a nice big icon that says Mahara. I know that's quite traditional. Or you might see copy the network server. Or you might just see a link that says network servers. But in this demo version here, it's http middlemyorg.uk. Quite often, though, it ends with, like always, it ends with jump.php, and usually it's Host ID equals three, so you know you've got the right link. Onto this, we're going to add and want URL equals. Then hop over to Mahara and go to the page that you want to arrive at and copy the URL for that page. Try to take this one slow because it looks very complicated. It's actually quite simple. So having copied the Mahara URL onto the end of that, we want to strip out a bit of the, the URL that's basically your organizational web address, so that we're leaving the bit that says view and which page it's on. We've then got to use some hex codes to replace some of the symbols in the Mahara part of the link. So we've got to replace the slash the question mark and the equal symbol with the, the hex codes equivalent of those. So for the slash, that's percent two f for a question mark, it's percent three f, and for an equal sign, it's percent three d. We just insert them into our URL, and then what you have at the end of that is a working URL that goes from your middle straight to your networked Mahara site to the correct page already logged in. The great thing is, once you've done this once, you can use the same URL and just change the ID number at the end, and it will take you to any other new page. And that essentially is that for how to go from Moodle to Mahara and stay signed in and arrive at the correct page. So, Thank you very much for being patient and listening to me. And hopefully, you'll have something to take from this. Uh, I'm very keen that people consider what the end user want rather than what's easiest for IT. Uh, and hopefully, you'll take that back with you. Uh, some very good comments there coming from Christina, who is uh, one of the one of the Mahara, uh, Mahara gurus. Uh, and thank you, Christina, for putting that offer to add that tip into the Mahara user manual. Okay. Do we have any particular questions? Oh, one from Gavin there. Uh, that's a very good question, 
Gavin, um, about staff being able to see who has submitted via the logs. Um, I have to say most of them probably didn't realise that they could view the logs for the assignment activity. Yeah, it's a fair comment. Um, the purpose of this was to make it simple for them to set it by default. And to be honest, most of them just got on with their work and were accepting of the fact that it was blind parking. Yeah, there is still a, a, an issue of, a, of how well it is really uh, replicating blind functionality. Uh, but from the staff perception, I found they assumed that everything was blind. They didn't tend to look for that particular uh, log feature. I'm also hoping that uh, either today or over the, the course of the next few days of the IMUT, other people will contribute to the discussion forum and share any particular little uh, tweaks that they have made for their institution and share with us how that was done and why that was done. Because I think that there will be other tweaks out there. These certainly aren't the only ones that people would, do, would use to have particular value at a, a local level or perhaps even at a, a much wider global level. Other people might take up what you've done and use it within their own institution. So please either share that just now or share it in the forum later on and let people know of, of any suggestions you have. Okay. Are there any other questions or comments? Hi, this is Vinny again from Pukanui. Um if, if there's no other, oh, sorry, I just think Christina's uh, popped a, a comment in the bottom there. Yeah, I think the okay. accessibility options are absolutely crucial, and it's always been my big argument to get around uh, marketing to say you must use this particular theme, because this particular theme doesn't always address the accessibility issues. Thanks, Gordon. Um, yeah, I just want to um, kind of bring it to a close then and say thank you again ever so much for participating. Um, it's been great to have you along. And um, we've got coming up next um, Martin's keynote. So I hope everybody can stay around for that. And I look forward to carrying on the discussions in the forums uh, and chatting to all of you later. Thank you again, Gordon. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.